Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 with Zebu Nation. This is Loser to Legend with Clyde FC and today we have for you the season finale for season 5 in Labrooks League 1. Now this video is going to be a little bit different than some of our other videos, our season ending videos anyway. Because I accidentally recorded an entire season ending video with my microphone muted. So it's already past the end of the season now that I'm recording this video. I don't want to have to like replay the end of the season. I kind of was okay with the end of the season so I wanted to keep it. But we're going to record another video with sound because... I don't know. Because uh, that's how these videos work I guess. If you saw my last video you saw what happened when I tried to actually dub in sound of a video I already recorded and it was kind of a disaster maybe it was actually kind of funny and enjoyable I don't know but we're gonna try it again this time we're gonna do it live forget about it we're gonna do it live uh, so let's check a look at our inbox and we got the old season <laughs> review email here and you know it's comparing this with the season review email from last season which was the 2021 season and we made some improvements in some areas and some not so much improvements in other areas. For example, in the cup competitions, we lost in the fourth round in the Scottish Cup. We lost in the group stage in the Betford Cup. We lost uh, in the second round in the Iron Brew Cup. And that's exactly what we did last season. Exact same rounds, different opponents, of course, but the exact same... Uh, we reached the same stages. So, on the one hand, that kind of shows you that maybe our team, even though we've gone up a level, we haven't really improved much. Because last season, we won League 2 and got promoted into League 1. And when you do that, when you get promoted to a new league, you kind of want to improve your team and improve the quality. And, and maybe that would show up in the cup competitions by being able to reach further into the competitions. But that wasn't really the plan for this season. The plan for this season, because expectations were so low, I decided that we were going to play more of our youngsters and see what we could get out of our youngsters and basically play the same team that won League 2 in League 1 and see how we could finish there. And as you can see, we finished 8th in League 1, which is good enough to avoid relegation, but uh, not really a stellar season. Although that was basically what the board wanted us to do so that's fine the place we did improve which is interesting is average attendance 928 last season in our uh, league championship season we only averaged 615 fans so just moving up a level has helped us with the fans and hopefully that helps us with finances and all that stuff we'll take a look at that later but our match of the season was a 3-1 victory over Montrose and our moment to forget was a 2-0 defeat to Brecken. So we'll take a look at some of the other stuff as we move through. We'll go, I guess we'll go emails first. Take a look at the season ending awards here. Player of the season is once again Darren Miller. Last season's league player of the season in League 2 is still this year's... Uh, fan favorite at 63 percent he really walloped the competition curry and davies our central defender were the other two who got a significant number of votes i guess the rest of the votes were split up between a bunch of people who weren't going to win because miller just ran away with it the icon of the franchise then we got uh, goal of the season by mclaughlin let's take a look at this goal versus peterhead It, oh boy, here's the sound. There's Breslin with the throw in to Cudahy. Gets it to Barry. Centers to McLaughlin. Oh yeah, I remember that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Top corner. Top shelf. Good shot. All right, McLaughlin, one of our signees this season. Did we sign McLaughlin this season? Let's take a look at him. Yeah, he was our signee this season. Our big League One signee on a free. 18 appearances, one goal. One cracking goal right there. The goal of the season. Two assists. 
So, you know, he didn't produce a whole lot. His average rating is okay. 6.8 is reasonable. One player of the match, probably for that game. But that kind of shows you, you know, the quality of signings where he was basically one of our best signings this season. And, uh, or at least one of our new signings anyway. And he didn't really uh, perform that well. Or at least he didn't produce that well. Let's put it that way. The actual signing of the season, as voted, was Adam Parks, the goalkeeper we picked up right at the end of the season with the last 10 games to go, and he really helped us uh, helped us avoid relegation. There's no other way around it. We paid this guy a princely fee to come in here and save our season, and he did it. So we got to be thankful for that. And then young player of the season was Barry been with Clyde now for four seasons. He's got a lot of games under his belt. He only played 18 times this season. He was injured a little bit. He still got three goals, four assists, a plus seven rating. All three seasons he's played with us. You know, the first season we signed him, he didn't really play any games. But the next three seasons, all plus seven rating. So that's really good. That's a guy who is producing at a high level. So very happy about that. Take a look at some season stats. Your top goal scorer, Peters, 18 goals. That's respectable for your, your top score, goal scorer. You want your top goal scorer to be around 20 goals if possible. So that's pretty good. Highest average rating, again, Peters. It's funny he didn't get any votes for player of the season. He's considering he's a top goal scorer and our top average player. Most assists, Dallas out there on the right wing with eight assists. Best pass completion, Conley, 81%. The deep-lying playmaker. He didn't play a ton this season, I don't think. He's only, you know, he's a marginal player. 23 years old, only two-star guy. He's probably not going to get much better than this. But what he does, he does relatively well. He passes the ball, as you can see with his, his passing. So this season, yeah, he only played 16 games. Got two assists, 6.91 rating. That's reasonable. Um, but... Yeah, he's been with Clyde now for five seasons, and he's hardly played any games. This is the season he's actually played the most in. So, good for him, I guess, that he's getting... You know, he is improving. He is getting better, but he's just not a guy who's going to who's gonna knock your socks off. Look at the rest of the stats here. Most player of the match awards, Peters with five. Again, a guy with got didn't get a majority of the votes, didn't even get a minority of the votes. And yet he's got three of our postseason awards here. Cudahy with the most yellow cards, our captain. Way to go. And then worst discipline, Barry with our one lone red card. So that's pretty good. We got uh, next up on the list, we got our best 11 squad. Peters was picked uh, to be one of our best 11, and yet he gets no votes. Interesting. Curry in goal, Stewart and Breslin. Has Breslin been at the right fullback for a while? I think he might have been there last season. McNiff still holding it down in central defense. Morrison is in there. Cudahy, Montgomery, Miller, Aknovich, Dallas, and Peters. So, you know, it's a pretty good starting 11. A lot of these guys are still here, so that bodes well, I think. Uh, let's see. Anything else we want to do before we check out? Uh, let's see. We've got... 104,000 for getting 8th place. That's a pretty good chunk of change. Any other interesting emails? We didn't get in the playoffs, obviously. Alright. Not a lot going on. So let's take a look at the actual competitions. Take a look at the final league table. We finished in 8th place after 36 games. 9 wins. 14 draws. 13 losses. Guess that's okay. Plus three goal differential is pretty good. A total of 41 points. So we finish not just out of relegation, but well out of relegation. 11 points ahead of Forfer. And if you saw our previous video, you saw that uh, at the three-quarter season mark, we only had four wins. So we actually went on a pretty good run there at the end of the season. Let's take a look at the table and take a look at that form and there we go look at that run at the end of the season pretty 
pretty good. So the game we watched in that last episode was right here versus 4 for 2 1. Pretty good victory, an important victory. That's a victory that kept us kept us within reach of eighth place and it's a very important win then we came back and had two tough losses versus two top teams Stranraer and queen of the south two three versus Stranraer, two one loss to queen of the south so you know we played the top teams pretty tough and that i think gave us confidence we found a style of play and we moved ahead we beat Montrose, which was another very important game because they were at the bottom of the table and we couldn't let them catch up to us in any way shape or form let's take a look at this uh, appearance here take a look at uh, the stats Stewart played very well at the fullback position 8.4 rating and Finlayson also at the other fullback 7.3 Miller in midfield three key passes seven eight point oh rating but the big man was our target man, Diver, playing in the diamond formation with a strike partner. He, uh, he really showed his quality, showed what he could do in this game. You know, he's okay playing up top as a lone striker, but I think, you know, being part of a partnership was very helpful for him. Barry sends one down and Diver just splits the defense and then nice shot. Just nicely aimed nicely timed shot for the big man doing a cartwheel here's stewart on the near side gets it to ferguson cut a he sends it into diver all alone they're not even marking him how, how do you let a guy that big just sit there and then we got one last goal oh no they get a goal Montrose sends one in oc gets the shot stopped and the parks can't stop the rebound it was not great defending there on the back line to let OC just take shot after shot. We're still up 2-1 at this point, 75 minutes down. Here's Stewart just bombing one forward. McKinley on the run. The defense falls asleep. The goalkeeper is like, what's happening? The goalkeeper looked like he was, I don't know what he's doing. He's checking the time on his watch or something, but he just stood there, let McKinley run in, finish it uncontested. It's like an uncontested layup in basketball. So there we go. There's our 3-1 victory over Montrose that really separated us between the bottom of the league. And it made didn't quite make sure that we were going to get uh, going to beat relegation, but it really helped, especially once we went on this run, beat Aloha 3-2, Dumberton 3-0. We had a string of draws, Sterling, Peterhead, Brecken, and then we finished it out with another 2-1 victory over Forfer. It was a really good game. It was basically a celebratory game. You know, we had uh, we had several of our youngsters in there, including some youngsters that we're going to take a look at in a minute with our, our youth intake. But if you look at this lineup, it's not a really impressive lineup, but we still managed to get the victory. So I was very happy about that. Um, Finlayson, 7.5 rating in there. Davies, a central defender, 7.4. So defensively played very well. Miller, again, with a 7.7 .7 rating. And King gets the player of the match with an 8.3 rating and a goal. Diver also got another goal. How would Diver do this season? How, how do he finish up? Nine appearances, five goals, two assists, 7.56 rating. I mean, that's production right there. You bring a guy in for the last five, nine games of the season and say, go to work, and he went to work. That's pretty good. Very impressed with that. So, okay, we've seen our form. We've seen how we finished. Let's, uh, let's just go down the checklist and finish out this video real quick. We got... The under-20s, we had a pretty nice youth intake. Let's get rid of some of these guys here. Can we get rid of some of these guys? Aknovich, you are no longer an under-20. Get out of here. Uh, is it worth doing that? I don't know. Connolly, you are not in the under-20s either. Get out of here. Get out of here. Curry, obviously not under 20s. I don't know. You know, goalie is going to be something to think about next season. Like, what are we going to do with all of these goalkeepers we got? You know, and veteran goalkeepers, too. I think that, 
I think that Parks has proved himself, right? That he's he should be our man going forward. He's got much more potential than Curry. He's got more current ability than Curry. He's younger than Curry. Curry's just going to have to be the backup. And if he's not ha happy with that, he's just going to have to get out of here. So this is the current state of our under 20s it's not looking real good we got one halfway decent character gary mccauley 17 year old striker target man 13 finishing is pretty good composure not really what you want free kicking is pretty good other than that not great other than acceleration this guy might actually make a much better poacher than a target man so we're gonna have to train him up on that but we do have several of our youngsters up here in the first squad because they played in our previous match so let's take a look who do we got here we got sean dowie goalkeeper 16 years old he's okay 13 reflexes 11 jumping reach 16 teamwork i guess is okay not really what you need for a goalkeeper but he's a three-star dude potential wise anyway possibly four stars so he's, you know, marginal. He's okay. Craig Murray is still one of our youngsters, 16 years old. Another guy, one-star ability. Maybe, possibly three-and-a-half-star ability. But he's got some be decent physicals. You know, he's all right. Got 12 heading, strength, 11 jumping reach. He's all right for a 16-year-old. Pretty good. Uh, Danny Scott is still a bit of a youngster, 19 years old. So he's still in the under-20s, but... His potential has gone nothing but down and down, so I don't think he's going to really pan out for us. He's got six starts with us, and I think we've seen his quality, so I don't know what we're going to do with him. Graham Bowden, 16 years old, one star, two and a half, maybe three and a half potential. He's okay fitness-wise. is pretty good. Jumping reach, interesting for us center midfielder who can play everywhere up the middle he can play central defense with that kind of jumping reach even maybe a little bit of defensive midfielder maybe attacking mid whatever we train this guy to do he could probably do even play out on the wing possibly um but that's about all he's got he's got decent passing ability but i don't know it's going to take a lot for this guy to to work out for us anything else we've got uh youngster wise we got ryan potter advanced midfielder he's pretty decent advanced playmaker some pace some flair some leadership we need some leadership for those youngsters another two and a half star guy so this is kind of what we're looking at it wasn't really a golden generation and even if it was like they just sold him off still kind of salty about that from the last episode if you saw they sold off uh, our top prospects chump change anyway so we're not going to be getting a lot of help next season from our under 20 so we got to figure out a new plan financially also not so good so i don't know where that plan is going to come from although the board has given us as you can see on the right here a million dollar payroll so i guess we're just going to have to find some some money or not find some money we're gonna have to find some players to spend all this money on uh, we're currently spending 660000 of that, so we got 400000 to go. That's at least, I don't know, 20 more players <laughs> at the rate. At least we could, we could try to find some high-quality players for that. I don't know if it's going to be possible. We could transfer some of that into transfer budget and try to buy somebody. I don't know how effective that's going to be. It hasn't been effective so far, but we got to do something to move up this league one table and i don't know that our youngsters are gonna cut it for us board wise we're still secure 59 percent, almost 60 percent. but uh you know they're still fine with our finances and our leadership even okay with our tactics a little bit 53 percent. that's good there's nothing really really bad here but competitions i guess 49 percent. uh club issues our job value is getting higher and higher, 68%. That's pretty good. Club stature is still okay, 59%. Develop 
players using the club's youth system. That's a new thing we got to do, which is unfortunate that our last group of recruits wasn't really that promising, even though we added this to our philosophy. So we got to find some youngsters to sign, and we got to find some prospects to develop. So we got to work on those two things. Club-wise, not much has changed. Facilities, field condition is still good. Adequate training facilities, below average youth facilities. We don't have the money to change any of that. Average coaching is pretty good. Basic youth recruitment, I'd love to change that. The board does not seem interested in doing any of that. Can we make a board request? Networking. Um, we could cut back on youth recruitment, but we cannot increase youth recruitment. So, it's no good. No good. General... General Cudahy, McKinley, still favored personnel. Duffy, Brown, head coaches who are icons, but we are not an icon. Miller is an icon. But we've yet to make the list. Uh, and this kind of brings me to another topic. Is that we, at the end of the season, we had Rangers sniffing around. They actually offered us an interview, and we took an interview with Rangers, one of the top teams in all of Scotland. I thought we had a very good interview. We were, the fans, you know, in the newspapers, the fans said, hey, Zebu Nation Jr. is our number one candidate, but for whatever reason, Rangers didn't hire me. Maybe it's because I don't have a high enough coaching badge, right? I don't have a, a pro license or even an A license. So maybe that's what held me back from getting that Rangers job. But that's something we got to think about going forward is who would we leave Clyde for? You know, because we've done a lot for Clyde. We haven't become even a favored personnel yet, which is kind of disappointing. And the board is undercutting us by selling out our youngsters. So I'm a little disenchanted with the board right now. But who would we leave them for? We'd definitely leave them for Rangers or Celtic. Either one of those two come calling, we're leaving. Who else? I don't know. I don't know. Would we leave for another premiership team? I don't know. Would we go for a national coaching job? Maybe. That would be interesting. Try to become a legend of Scotland by coaching the national team. Maybe we can look at the under-23s if it's an Olympic year. Is 2022 an Olympic year? Possibly. Yes? I don't know. I'll have to look into it. But anyway, we'll look into those things later. But for now, we are with Clyde. We have signed a new contract, so there's no problems there. Take a look at our contract. Getting 65000 now. We're actually making more than our goalkeeper's making now, so that's good. It expires again. It's just a one-year contract, but we got some raises in there if we get promoted, so that's fun transfers we can take a look at the transfer history not much has happened since the end of the season obviously transfer window is not open currently that i recall anyway we're not doing any business uh medical center probably not that important right now same with uh we signed some staff we now have a full medical staff we have a full recruitment staff Two whole scouts on the team. That's good. And a chief scout. So we are all scouted up. No data analysts. We don't have a data analyst facility. Maybe we could use one in the future, but for now we don't need one. And then the rest of our staff is still pretty good. We're still the best staff in uh, League One by leaps and bounds. We are number one in every category. So no real reason to make changes there. Team report. Do we, do we care about looking at this? Stats, I suppose. Best player in terms of shots. Cudahy, 25% of his shots scored this season. Only eight shots, two goals. Kessie, shots on target. Five of his seven were on target. That's pretty good. Penalties scored. We had two players. Uh, worst player, Darren Miller. 63 shots, zero goals. That's no good. That's got to change. You got to do something about that. And also shots on target. Only nine of his 63 on target. So we got to we gotta do something about Miller. We got to tell him not to shoot so much. That's no good. For somebody taking that many shots, 
we gotta we gotta worry about that. Um, mistakes leading to goal. So we had 600 total mistakes this season, and 15 of them went for goals. Okay, that's interesting. I don't really don't really want to see that. Um, okay, this is interesting. We can look at our leading scorers here. Peters, 18 goals on 78 shots. That's okay. I guess. Hit his last goal 111 minutes ago, so that's not so good. Diver had his last goal one minute ago, so there you go. He's a prolific scorer. Anyway, discipline. Worst player was Stewart. Eighty-four tackles attempted, fifty-four. So he's not a great tackler. Morrison, that's interesting. One of our central defenders, forty-eight tackles attempted, forty-three completed. That's pretty good. That's a nice percentage right there. Um, Curry, our goalkeeper, had one foul in thirty games. Hendry, our defensive forward had 26 fouls in 14 games look out all right we could get lost in the weeds here i don't know how much we need to we need to continue on with this but anyway dynamics looking real good hierarchy lots of team leaders four influential players curry barry mckinley stewart peters has moved up into a team leader that's where that extra guy came from so that's pretty good Finally have three team leaders. What's his leadership actually look like? Five. So I don't know why all these bad leaders keep getting pushed to the top of the hierarchy, but whatever. I guess some leadership is better than no leadership. I don't know if that's actually true. 33 player support. Three players have no opinions of us. So that's pretty, pretty good. Social groups. Miller and his band of merry men here. Social group A. Now Barry has formed his own little social group with some new players and some old players as well. Barry, Parks, Bowden, Lindsay, Ferguson. That's an interesting mix of players. Um, roughly the same amount of time and are generally balanced. So I don't know why all these guys aren't in the main social group. I don't know. Uh, our youngsters who were called up from the academy are the only guys in the others, so we're looking pretty good. Happiness. Everybody seems pretty copacetic. Uh, Jack Breslin's a little concerned with playing time. He didn't play a ton this year, but he got, he got a good amount of games. I don't know what he's complaining about for a two-star character. He's reached his level as well. He got 15 games. That's pretty good. Half the season, basically. So I don't know what he's complaining about. So there we go. That's the season finale. I don't know exactly what else to do since we don't have a game to play. We've looked at everything we can look at. I think we just need to consider what we're doing next season. We've got that huge budget. we got to find some players. we got to find somebody to uh, bring in here and improve the quality of the team so there we go there's the board has set the initial payroll to 1.2 million a transfer budget of zero we have signed a few players gibson has re-signed triggered the extension for daknovich uh let's see anybody else uh mclaughlin we re-signed him dallas Bane Barry. Who's Bane? He must be one of our youngsters. Stephen Bane. Oh, he's a sports scientist. Okay, so we got him re-signed. Barry re-signed. We definitely needed to re-sign him. Cudahy, Campbell, Dallas, Miller, Barker. Who's Barker? New coach. Old coach. I don't think we signed a new coach. Yes, we did sign a new coach. He was at Weston Supermare in the Vanarama League. So apparently we went out and got this guy. He's pretty decent. 12 motivating, discipline. He's going to be one of our general coaches, I assume. Yeah, just a coach. Decent attacking, technical, tactical. 
Works with youngsters. Judging player ability. I wish this guy was a scout for us. But anyway, improve the coaching staff. That's already the best in the league. I guess that's good. Strength upon strength. So there we go. We've signed a lot of our top players. I think there's still a lot of players left that we're going to leave unsigned. And uh, maybe try to improve the squad with... Uh, yeah, so we got Hog Wilson Henvy is out of contract. Yeah, it's probably best. We don't necessarily need him if he's not going to play. Cassie's looking for a new deal. That's, I don't know, Hendry, Curry, Stewart, Morrison. I mean, some of these guys we gotta we got to think about. McKinley. I'd love to get Diver back on loan. Ferguson. He didn't play a ton for us this season, but uh, he's, he's a pretty good player, a pretty good prospect. Played 13 games for us. Got a goal, two assists. It's okay. It's okay. So, yeah, we got a lot of work to do on the roster for next season. And uh, that's about it. You know, we got the new MLS save coming up this next week, starting Monday. So we're going to work on that. That's going to be hopefully a daily series Monday through Thursday at least. Maybe Monday through Friday. And then we'll play Clyde FC on the weekends. So that's going to be it for now. So until next season, season six, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.